The Somali pirates that once terrorized shipping in the Indian Ocean, have they gone for good? And the Somali conflict that's frustrated the country's progress, is there an end in sight? I'm Martin Stanford. This is Insight. Welcome to Insight. First today, has the threat from Somali pirates gone away? In 2010, they were responsible for nearly half of all attacks on merchant ships and fishermen's boats, taking around a thousand innocent seafarers hostage, many of whom didn't survive their ordeals. That triggered a response by NATO to monitor and prevent their attacks. But that mission has now come to an end. This just weeks after some of the longest held hostages by Somali pirates were released after spending years in captivity. Pirate incidents have almost disappeared off the coast of Somalia, but there are fears and proof they're poised to strike again with an attempted attack foiled by private security guards in the last few months. Insight's Ty Genwright tells us more. Under cover of darkness, a counter-operation against Somali pirates begins. It was January 2011 when this chemical tanker was captured in the Arabian Sea and used by the pirates to attack other ships. 21 crew members were held hostage for six days before the South Korean Navy launched this mission to free them. Somali pirates have taken around 1,000 people hostage over the last decade. These 26 men, captured in 2012, were among the last before an international military clampdown began. This from the bottom, you have opened your heart to help us. We needed your help. Thank you. These men were released just seven weeks ago They've been held for nearly five years. But while the number of such attacks has fallen, the pirates have not gone away. There hasn't been a successful attack since May 2012, but only on October the 22nd, a tanker uh, was attacked by a pirate skiff uh, and fired upon, and the armed guard team on board had to return fire to deter that attack. So there is still a threat. There is still the opportunity for the pirates uh, to go out and attack, uh, and that op opportunity gets greater as the deterrent gets less. And there is now less of a military deterrent after NATO ended its anti-pirate mission. This was the last surveillance flight by the Danish Air Force over the Indian Ocean just a fortnight ago. With scarce resources, the Alliance is prioritising its deterrent to Russia in the Black Sea and people smugglers in the Mediterranean. Why is Somalia still such a problem? Vessels could be hijacked and anchored off the coast of Somalia with relative impunity. Somalia is defined and still very much as a failed state. It's not a, not a, uh, a, a word one likes to use. Law and order ashore is beginning to take place. We need law and order on the high seas off the coast of Somalia, and that has not yet established itself. The international deterrent has not disappeared entirely. The European naval force has renewed its mission for a further two years. While Somalia has a new government in place, it has a long way to go to create a stable society. European officials warned just last year of a resurgence in piracy if international forces withdrew completely. Many large parts of the coast of Somalia are ungoverned or there is no rule of law. And that is where the EU comes in to try and help, but there is still a long way to go. At the end of October, some of the last known hostages of Somali pirates returned home to Indonesia after their near five-year ordeal. I'm so, so happy. Really, I'm so, so happy. 26 were reunited with their loved ones, but three of their fellow crew members had died. International intervention has all but stopped others suffering a similar fate. But as we know, history has a nasty habit of repeating. Ty Genwright, reporting for Insight. Well, to discuss that further, I'm joined by Laura Hammond, who's a senior lecturer in development studies, 
and Idil Osman, who's a senior teaching fellow. And both join us today from the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. Laura, why do you think the piracy phenomenon has, is on the wane? Well, I think there have been these, these escorts, naval escorts, that have been uh, going on over the last several years, and that's had some impact. But that doesn't explain entirely why there's no. been such a drop. The, the real thing, I think that the real um, sort of game changer really was um, the, the decision by communities on the ground and local administrative structures and government structures that uh, they needed to stand against piracy and, and really call people back out of that, that sector of the economy, if you like. Uh, and that's really had much more of an impact than anything else. It came from the grassroots. Local people decided this is a bad thing to do, do you think? Yes, I think, you know, um, partly from, from, the, uh, from the grassroots, also a lot of pressure from international community. Obviously, there's a lot of business that goes around that, uh, that part of, of, uh, of, of the world. So there's a, lot, there's a com combination of pressures that I think have culminated into yeah. the decline. And there's a lot of naval vessels out there, weren't there? I mean, yeah. the Indians put one out there. I think the British sent one over. NATO sent ships out there as well. Uh, did it become economic and not so easy to do, do you think, as well? That was a further deterrent. Well, I think, I mean, even though there were, there were a lot of escorts, there was a massive area that was affected. It is a very big ocean. Massive. Yes. There was no way that you could possibly, and, and those who were involved in the escorts were the first to say, there's no way we could, we could possibly police every square kilometer of this ocean. So it was never going to be the, the sole solution to the problem. Um, it, what it did, though, was make, uh, make it more expensive, meant that the pirates needed to have much more sophisticated equipment, which they had for quite some time. Um, but at some point, it became not cost effective. They couldn't rely on the kind of protection and support crews on the ground in mm. Somalia uh, itself. And so I think the economics of the thing sort of has fallen apart. And the money that was extorted from um, carriers or insurance companies and whether but do you know what happened to that? I mean, was it as easy? It was these headlines that, you know, £100,000, £250,000 have been paid in ransom. Did it actually get to local people or did it just disappear? What do you think? Well, uh, we've seen a lot of cities come out of nowhere. <laughs> so it's been, um, I, you know, it's been invested in a lot of uh, um, uh, port cities. There's a lot of it that has been invested in Nairobi and other parts of, uh, of Kenya. So we've seen the money, but you know, it's um, it, not much of it has benefited the, the, the communities that should be benefiting from, from the fishing. The sort of trickle down out. effect you might have wished upon just didn't come about, right? No, and I think that's partially what led to the, uh, the communities themselves, you know, seeing that this is in the long run, not a viable way to, to, to earn a living. And in terms of the fishing industry, which was so affected by international trade and it, it, it actually provided a lot of manpower, didn't it? It was disaffected fishermen who sort of started this habit of going out with guns. Um, have they had their minds turned or is it just more pragmatic than that? It's just not an easy thing to do anymore. I think they've probably turned to, they have turned to other kinds of economic activities. There still is a problem with overfishing of foreign vessels in Somali waters yeah. um, and there still is a problem with dumping of toxic waste, which is one of the other justifications in a sense that the, the so-called guards of the Somali coastline used as their justification for why they were engaging in this. Um, I mean, I think, to be honest though, despite the fact that many who were involved in piracy gave those two reasons as, as the explanations for why they were involved, it was really about profiteering and about trying to amass as much as possible from the ransoms that were being paid. So, so the those two problems that they used as their justification are still very much in existence, would yeah. you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yes. well, and we're there's also limitations now to what the fishermen uh, can do in terms of actually making a living from being fishermen because of the uh, boundaries that have now been set to where they can actually go for fishing. So the problems that existed prior to the piracy you know, are very much still alive. They're still alive there. Okay, and that's something we're going to pick up in our next part of the programme. This is Insight coming up. What's the future for war-torn country of Somalia?